Thank you everyone for joining us and welcome to Zendesk 101. In this session, we'll show you the fundamental milestones that will have you ready to start taking tickets in Zendesk and clarify some vocabulary. Before we jump into the content portion, we want to take a moment to acknowledge that many of you joining are learning customer support software for the first time. That's an awesome endeavor, and we're excited at the opportunity to show you the basics of getting started with Zendesk. Knowing how to use tickets correctly can make you more efficient and helps you understand what tools are available to you. The benefit of our support ticket interface is that it makes it much easier than email to track, prioritize, and solve customer requests. This ultimately helps make your job easier and customers happier because you'll be able to provide customized support with quick and accurate resolutions. The agenda for this session is to go into Zendesk and show a demo of ticketing, demonstrate how to edit a trigger, create a macro, and how to connect your email. We'll clarify vocabulary along the way and demonstrate the value of bringing customer support workflows to life with ticketing best practices. Let's jump into the ticketing workflow. Most teams start managing customer service requests through a shared inbox like Outlook or Gmail, but quickly realize that it is not scalable as their business grows. So we'll focus on showing how it's easier and more streamlined to manage those support emails in our ticket interface. It's also possible to manage support on other channels that you want to allow customers to contact you from. Examples of other channels include phone, messaging, social media, and more. We won't cover those today, but we'll share resources about those channels. When you sign into Zendesk, you'll see the agent dashboard. This is where you'll go to get a holistic view of your support priorities for the day. This dashboard provides an overview of open tickets that need your attention and key updates on tickets that you are working on. In this instance, we see some sample tickets that we'll be working with shortly. Another way to review tickets is to look at your views. You can find views by clicking on the file folder icon on the left side. Views help agents prioritize tickets that need attention by organizing tickets based on specific criteria. Zendesk comes with some predefined views, but admins can customize these views by categories that help you and your team stay organized. Some category examples could be ticket status, special groupings such as VIP customers, or customers in certain regions or ticket priority. If you click the play button, you'll be served tickets from the top to the bottom of a view, ignoring tickets that other agents are working on, which helps you be more efficient. When we're inside a ticket, we should have all the context that we need to assess the reason a customer is reaching out, and ideally how to resolve their issue. On the left, we see the customer, identified here as the requester, as well as the agent who is assigned to the ticket. If you're an admin, you can assign tickets to your team. You click the assignee here and start typing the name of the agent that you want to work on this ticket. They will appear in a dropdown here as long as you've already added them as an agent in Zendesk. Many early stage companies find this valuable, especially when they're transitioning from a shared inbox where task and responsibility delegation can be more challenging to implement at scale. There are features that allow you to auto assign tickets. We'll share resources on this, but won't go into that in this demo. On the left side of the ticket is also where we see some basic ticket context, such as ticket forms and priority. Some of these components can be used for reporting on the types of tickets you receive. For the scope of this demonstration, we won't be elaborating on these components, but we encourage you to review our Help Center articles if you're interested in learning more about ticket fields and forms. Now we'll talk about how to learn more about the customers you're working with. When you're in a ticket, you can click the person icon on the right, and that's going to reveal the context about them, their personal details, and also the historic interactions they have had with your company. This is helpful because you can get a sense of their engagement with your company and the previous experiences they've had reaching out for support, which equips you to personalize your conversation with them and troubleshoot complex issues. An example could be an accidental duplicate request submitted by your customer. If you've installed any apps from the marketplace that would provide additional customer context, you will see those apps here as well. For example, Shopify users can connect the Shopify app, which displays order history directly in the ticket and provides helpful context for agents resolving requests. This is much better than a shared inbox, which requires you to bounce around in different tools to get the full customer context. That's just one example of many apps available in the marketplace. 
In the middle, we have the body of the ticket. Similar to how you view emails, this is where you see the message that your customer has sent to you. Down here is where you will respond to your customer. You'll see that you have the option to select an internal note if you want to add any context privately to your team. Those will be highlighted in this color and your customer won't see it. To respond to your customer directly, you'll select public reply and add your message. There are probably some requests that you see over and over again within your business. With Zendesk, you can create a template called a macro that helps standardize responses and make you more efficient in responding to similar requests and questions from your customers. To apply a macro to a ticket, you'll select this Apply Macro button and select the appropriate response. You can see here that with just a few clicks, you can respond to your customer. We'll show you how to create a macro like this a bit later in the demo. If we click these four squares up here, we call this the product tray, we can navigate to our admin center. This is where you'll be working on all of the settings for the account, which we can find in the menu here on the left side. In this next section, we'll be talking about ticket statuses. So I'm gonna search status here to bring up ticket status settings. The first status here is new, meaning a request was just received, but it has not yet been opened and it has not yet been assigned to an agent. This means that there wasn't any sort of automatic assignment. The ticket is waiting for someone to be assigned to respond to the customer. Then we have the open status, which means that the ticket is ready for an agent to address. So an agent is assigned and the customer is waiting on a response. Pending is the status you will use when you're waiting for an update from the end user. This is a good status to use when you cannot solve the customer's problem in your first reply because you need more information from the customer. Pending implies that I am waiting for more information from the customer so that I can solve their issue. Next, we have on hold, which is actually not enabled out of the box. You will have to enable this one here, like so. We recommend that you use on hold if you're working with a third party. So let's say one of the third parties you work with is a shipping provider and a customer writes to you and they say, hey, I ordered my product a week ago and I still haven't gotten my shipping details. What's going on? While you're reaching out to your shipping provider for those shipping details, you would want to put that ticket on hold to indicate that there is no way for you to proceed without more information from that third party first. An industry best practice here is to ensure you respond to your customer before putting this ticket on hold so they know what's happening behind the scenes. The next status here is solved, and that means your agents don't anticipate a follow-up question from the request and consider it complete. If there is a follow-up question, Zendesk will reopen the ticket. When a solved ticket goes into the closed status, it means the ticket is completed and it cannot be reopened. Zendesk has a built-in automation which closes tickets after remaining in the solved status for four days. You are able to edit this timing if you would like tickets to become closed in more or less time. One thing to note here is, if an end user does respond on a closed ticket, Zendesk will create a follow-up ticket. It will be linked to the original one, so you'll still have the relevant customer context and information. It will just be a new ticket with a new ticket number. When a customer reaches out to you for support, it's an industry best practice to confirm their request was successfully submitted. So I'll show you how to set that up or use the default auto response, which is called a trigger, that is already configured in Zendesk. To do that, we'll navigate to our product tray and select admin center. This is where you'll go to configure all of your settings. Once we're in the admin center, we can find triggers by navigating to the objects and rules section, finding business rules, and selecting triggers. The search function at the top of this menu is also very helpful. So if we type in triggers, you see it narrows down the menu quickly. Once we're here, we'll see all the default triggers that come with your Zendesk instance. We strongly recommend that you don't delete any of these triggers. If you don't need them, you can simply deactivate them by clicking on the three dots on the right and selecting the deactivate option. For this demo, we will be editing the message copy that is sent out to your end users confirming their ticket has been submitted. This trigger is called Notify Requester and CCs of Received Request. Once we are inside the trigger, we see the trigger name, description, and category. When we scroll down further, we can see the condition statements. In summary, this trigger fires when a ticket is created. 
Below that, we have the action that takes place when the conditions are met. This one is notifying the end user by email that their support request has been received and your team is working on it. This is where we will edit the copy. The default copy includes a few placeholders, such as the ticket number and end user name. We suggest keeping these placeholders. Think of them like containers for dynamically generated information about the ticket, user, and custom data. You can find additional placeholders by searching for the Zendesk placeholders reference article. This is where you will update the language to reflect your brand like so. When you are happy with your copy, click Save. Most companies receive a lot of similar tickets. With Zendesk, you can use macros to quickly send a templated response, kind of like a canned message. The cool thing about macros is that you can also apply actions that can update ticket properties. Admins can create shared macros to be used by all agents or groups of agents. For this example, we'll be creating a macro which adds a message for the agent to send to the customer, updates the status of a ticket, and sends a separate email to our shipping partner. In the Admin Center, we'll navigate to Workspaces, Agent Tools, and select Macros. Here we'll click Create Macro. On this page, we will enter the macro name. I will call this one Shipping Update and add actions for the macro. Admins have the ability to make macros available for certain groups of agents. For the purpose of this demo, we will make this macro available to all agents. In the Add Action section, I'm going to add three actions. I'm going to set the status as on hold. I'm going to add a comment for the agent to send to the end user, letting them know that they are working with a third party to find a solution. I am also going to start a side conversation with our shipping partner via email, which is going to send a separate message to our shipping partner asking for updates, keeping that context inside the ticket without showing it to our customer. We'll click Create Macro at the bottom here to save this macro. To show how agents then use this macro, we'll navigate back to support and select a ticket. At the bottom, we see the apply macro option like we demonstrated earlier. This will apply all the actions we just created with a few clicks. Now we'll stitch everything together by connecting your external email address to your account. We welcome you to follow along with this portion of the demo. In the Admin Center, locate the Channels section in the menu on the left and click Email to view your email settings. Under Support Addresses, you'll see Add Address on the right, and you'll select Connect External Address. I'll be selecting the Gmail Connector option since I will be connecting a Gmail account, However, you can select email forwarding and follow the setup wizard instructions if you have a different email provider. If you wish to create tickets from the last 50 emails in your inbox, you'll check off that setting before continuing with Google. Here, you'll select the email you wish to connect and follow the setup wizard instructions. When this is completed, you'll click finish and see that the email is verified here with a green check. Zendesk will also send a verification email to the address you just entered. Now, when a customer emails you, it will be received as a ticket in Zendesk, enabling you to keep track of your customer requests and streamline your support processes. I've sent a test email to the Gmail account that we've just connected to show what it looks like when it is received in Zendesk as a ticket. If we navigate back to support and open it, we see how it looks just like the sample tickets we reviewed in the beginning of this demo. I'll send a public reply confirming the ticket test worked, which the customer will receive as an email when I submit the ticket. In this case, I'll choose the solved status. Another important feature to know about Zendesk is that most of the components of a ticket can be used to create reports in Explore. While we won't elaborate on creating reports in Explore here, you can see a screenshot that illustrates some of the reporting capabilities. 
As you take tickets over time, you can use reporting to gain valuable insights about your company. For some of you, this could mean using data to make informed decisions about your product roadmap or simply learning ways to make your customer support workflow more efficient. Once you've been working in Zendesk for a few months, we encourage you to open the Zendesk report dashboards and do some discovery. Before we wrap up, we're going to show you how to navigate your account. This question mark here is our help center. If you scroll down to the bottom here, you can open a chat widget. This is the best place to go for quick help regarding product and sales questions. Our agents are available Monday to Friday and typically answer within a couple of minutes. This is where you'll also find training videos and help articles. You can also navigate to the admin center and find your billing and subscription information by navigating to account, billing, and selecting subscriptions. Lastly, if you are on Suite, which is what I'm currently using, you will have access to the support product, which is the ticketing interface I showed today. And you have access to more of our products, such as Help Center, Talk, Chat, and more. You can go here to the product tray to access all of those other products. Thanks for watching Zendesk 101. 